But the big message here is we're not out of this. This week we've had days with the highest number of new cases in Calgary. We've had seven more deaths, I'm sorry to say, since the last time we had a media briefing. So certainly, while we have plateaued, it is not safe to say we have peaked and we are declining. That's not to say that the province was wrong in bringing forward a relaunch plan. In fact, they were right in doing so. And it is a very thoughtful plan. It is very uh, oriented towards information and data, which is something that I really appreciate. Now, certainly there are some squabbles here and there. Uh, I perhaps had to spend some time uh, with a provincial official yesterday explaining the difference between massage therapists and body rub practitioners. Don't ask. Um, but talking about how some of those medical services might want to be accelerated with others. Um, I got to tell you that I was surprised when I heard May 14th. And my very first thought was, that is way too early. But then when I listened to what the province was saying and I realized what was actually being said was it could be as early as May 14th if the following things are in place. And those things, I must tell you, are not yet in place. So I don't want people to red circle May 14th on their calendar and say, woohoo, we're good to go. Because even then, even in stage one, we're not good to go. It is a thoughtful, phased in uh reopening of a lot of things that are going on but the thing that i really want to underline which deputy chief henry will talk much more about is that our physical distancing and mass gathering restrictions remain in place you know groups of more than 15 people you must stay two meters or six feet or the length of a full-grown llama apart still this stuff is still important and in fact it's even more critical now because it's our actions over the next two weeks that define whether or not we will even get to phase one of the reopening. So City Council yesterday had a full day meeting talking about the impact of the COVID crisis on the city's finances. And there's good news and bad news. The good news is that as we've sharpened our pencils, those numbers that I've been sharing in the past 15 million a week up to 400 or 450 million uh, over the course of this crisis in terms of a loss to the city are probably a bit too high. Um, we're looking at numbers now that look like on a bad case, 235 million base case, but that doesn't include the Calgary police. It doesn't include aid to nonprofit agencies, and it doesn't include any measure for people who might go out of business or not be able to pay their bills going forward. So 400 million is still an outside, but realistic number. And so that's big money. And I want you to know that your city government has been working hard, has been working for many years, very hard on managing economic um, development over this time. As you know, the city has been extremely financially responsible. Our property taxes are among the lowest in the country for residences and for businesses. In fact, the lowest in the country for most residences. Uh, and over the last couple of years, since the economic downturn, we found over $700 million in savings and efficiencies that have been returned to the taxpayers. Since I became mayor almost 10 years ago, we've cut more than a half a billion dollars in debt. So the good news is that versus other governments, we're actually in pretty good shape. We've got a strong balance sheet, which is a fancy way of saying we have some cash in the bank. We have run ourselves very well, and we have some capacity. But this is like nothing we've ever seen before. It will actually be impossible for us to be able to go forward without assistance from the provincial and federal governments. You know, some folks say, well, can you just cut costs to make up for that amount because you're not supposed to run a deficit at the end of the year? And I have to tell you this straight, that is impossible. For us to lose up to 10% of our entire budget in the span of a few months means that no cuts will get us there. No cuts will get us to that gap. 75% of our budget goes to police, fire, roads, and transit. If I were to cut the entire parks department, the entire recreation department, everything we do in arts and culture, and a whole bunch of enabling services at the city, we still wouldn't get there. And so clearly, we're in a situation where we need a new solution and we need the federal and provincial governments who have debt capacity and who have the ability to borrow money at incredibly low rates right now, basically zero, 
uh, to step in and give us a hand on there on that. 